Hi again, and welcome to the iSprint webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSprint tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. My name is Nadia. I'm a community manager at iSpring and I will be the moderator for today's session. And today we are going to cover a very interesting topic. We will talk about how to sync audio and PowerPoint slides. And to cover this topic, I have with me today Arena, a tech support supervisor. Arena, thanks for tuning in. How are you doing today? Hi everyone. Hi Nadia. I'm doing fine today. Oh, How amazing. are you? I'm very excited about today's presentation. And at this point, let me pass the mic over to you, Arena, to start the presentation. So, hi everyone. My name is Arena. I'm a technical support supervisor at iSpring Solutions and I will be presenting for you today. Let's face it, everybody is familiar with the PowerPoints. And in many cases, it is super powerful. But shall we put it to the test? We are launching a series of webinars where we will compare the capabilities of PowerPoint and iSpring for exactly the same tasks. And we will start with synchronizing audio and PowerPoint slides. Our first challenge that our customers come across is synchronizing audio with the slides. We often get questions on this topic. So guys, let us know in the chat if you too have to do some thinking in your PowerPoint. All right, I see that many of you join us to learn more about synchronizing audio and video. If you have any questions during the webinar, please uh, put them in chat and my colleague Nadia will be, happy, will, will be happy to read them and I will definitely answer them. So, in today's webinar, we will look into three cases of working with audio narration. First, we will synchronize audio with slides. Then, we will sync it to animations and also learn how to create an audio file with a text-to-speech feature. And thirdly, we will add a playlist that will play across slides. We will perform each task both in PowerPoint and iSpring, and then see which way you prefer it. And as a bonus for advanced iSpring users, we will show you how to move audio from one project to another. After the session, you will have two consistent ways of working with audio in PowerPoint and iSpring. We are going to work on a course about the history of the Space Shuttle program. I've already put together all the slides, but there is one thing missing, and that is audio narration. Our first task will be adding narration to all slides. We already have an audio track that was recorded by a professional voice artist, so we will use that for our presentation. To match slides and the narrator's speech, we will have to listen to the audio first and define how much time it takes to narrate each slide. I've already done that in advance, so we will be able to look at the timings that we need to set up for each slide. Please look at this slide in my presentation. Here you can see how much time we need for each slide to match the slide transitions with the narrator's speech. So now when we have our timings, we can open the course in PowerPoint and start working on it. So this is my course in PowerPoint. I have two versions. One is for iSpring settings and the second one is for PowerPoint settings. They are absolutely the same and I'm going to switch them, switch between them during the webinar. I need two versions because I don't want the PowerPoint and iSpring, se and iSpring settings to interfere each other. So we are going to start in the PowerPoint copy and we will add audio narration to slides with the PowerPoint first. So the first step we are going to do is to add audio to slide number one. To do this, I'm going to click on slide number one, go to insert, click where it says audio, and select audio on my PC. 
Next, you will need to open the folder where you have your audio. I already have my folder opened and I'm going to add audio narration here. When, once it's added, you need to move the speaker icon to the right to make sure that our learners don't see it in the middle of the slide. Then we will need to select audio and click where it says playback. Then we will need to click on play across slides. We are done here and now we need to add timings to each slide to make sure that slide transition transition according to the narrator's speech. To do that, you will need to go to Transitions tab. Next, you will need to make sure that on mouse click option is unchecked. It's here on the right. So on all of the slides, it must be unchecked. And when it's done, you will need to add timing to each slide. You will need to add timing here at the bottom. Make sure to click on after and put your timings in the middle. So for the first slide, I'm going to need 10 seconds. For slide number two, I'm going to add 12 seconds. All right, 12. For slide number three will be 22 seconds. All right. Sorry, I added 22 hours. <laughs> be careful when you do that. Otherwise, your students will have to watch the slide for 22 hours. I don't think it's fun. <laughs> Okay, and for slide number four, we need to add 13 seconds. All right. I'm not going to add any audio or timings for slide five yet, because we will do that later when we will be working on another task. Now we are going to preview the project. We are done with our settings. And as for preview, due to webinar platform limitations, you will not hear the audio if I just click slideshow in PowerPoint. But no worries, we recorded a video and Nadia will help us to play it now. And you will see the results of the settings that we just did. Nadia, can you please run the first preview? Yeah, sure. Give me a second. Thank you. Program. The main idea of the Space Shuttle program was to launch a reusable space shuttle that usually carried astronauts and payload into low Earth orbit. Early history of the program. In 1969, United States Vice President Agnew chaired the National Aeronautics and Space Council, which discussed post-Apollo options for manned space activities. Based on the advice of the Space Council, President Nixon made the decision to pursue the low Earth orbital infrastructure option. Space Shuttle and its Missions The shuttle is a winged manned spacecraft that can achieve low Earth orbit. At the conclusion of the mission, the shuttle deorbits and re-enters Earth's atmosphere to land. Okay, I think the preview is over. Nadia, thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen again. And actually, uh, Nadia, do we have any questions in chat that I can answer right now before we move on to the next part of this uh, task? Actually, yes, we have one question from Katrin. Uh, she asked, why not put the audio in each slide instead of across? Catherine, thank you so much for your question. Sure, you can definitely add audio in each slide if you have separate audio pieces. But if you have just one audio piece recorded uh, as a whole, you will have to use a third party software to separate audio in, in, into pieces. And uh, for uh, so it's not always convenient. So here I'm showing the way of uh, setting the uh, of setting the audio narration synchronization by using timings. So, but this way, the way that you suggested also works definitely, and it's even maybe easier than the one that I showed if you if you have uh, different audio files. 
All right, uh, thank you so much. I'm happy that we had one question. It's a very good question, very useful. And now we can move on to the second part of our <clears throat> task. And I'm going to do the same thing that I've just did in PowerPoint and iString. And we will see how it works there. I will go to the uh, iSpring copy of my course. And uh, now we are going to add audio and synchronize it with slides using the Manage Generation Editor. You can find Manage Generation Editor on the iSpring Suite ribbon. iSpring Suite is a tab in PowerPoint. Once you click it, you will need to look on the left and you will find Manage Generation here. Manage Narration allows you to record audio and video narrations to PowerPoint presentations. So I'm going to click on it. Now we have uh, a window with our narration editor opened and I will quickly go through the interface of it before we actually start working in there. So on the left, uh, there is the list of slides. In the middle, you can find the slide with the preview, the preview of your PowerPoint slide. And once you switch between them, you will see the preview of each slide. And at the bottom, you will see audio and video tracks. Actually, I do have some audio here, so I'm going to delete them. Because we need that fresh and clean <laughs> to work with it. All right, so now let's look at the top panel of the iSpring Narration Editor. Here you can add your pre-recorded audio. That's what we're going to do now. You can record your own audio or video. You can edit the clips that you recorded. And of course, you can synchronize your audio and slides in this window. So now we will get right to it. First, I'm going to add the same audio track that I just used in PowerPoint. And to do this, I'm going to click where it says audio and select from file. Then I will select the first audio, which is audio for slides. And here you will need to look at this window very attentively. Here you need to make sure that you have slide one selected and also that the option adjust slide duration is unchecked. You need to uncheck it because we want to we want the audio to play across slides. And if you check that, you will see that audio and slide match. So I'm going to uncheck it. Next, I'm going to click insert. Once I click insert, the audio is now added here at the bottom on the track. To synchronize it with your slides, you will need to click sync on the tool on the top toolbar here. When you click it, uh, a new button, Start Sync, will appear. And now you, need, you will need to click Start Sync, listen to your audio, and click Next Slide when it's time. So you won't have to listen the audio track in advance and uh, count any timings. You can just listen it and click Next Slide on the go. So wh while when I will be doing that, you will not hear the audio for the same reason, but I will comment what I'm doing. You will see how it works. And then we will also show the preview. So I'm going to click Start Sync. As you can see, the next slide button appeared here. And I'm going to click it. So let's wait for that to reach 15 seconds. And I will click Next here. So I hope that you get the idea. Once you reach the end of the slides, you need to click Done. So now I'm going to show you a tip. If you clicked Next Slide earlier or later than needed and you need to adjust the slide transition, you may just move this slide border. So please look at the track. As you can see, there is a little line that you can hold with your mouse button and move around like this. Please note that when I move it, the next slide is moving. If you don't want that, you need to hold shift button on your keyboard. Again, hold it with your mouse cursor 
and then it will only move the slide border. So this way you can adjust your slides and make sure that they match the audio narration perfectly. All right, we've just did uh, the uh, so we've just did the synchronization in the iSpring narration editor. So I don't think that we need to show the preview video again because it will be absolutely the same. It will look just like in PowerPoint. And instead of that, I suggest that we can conduct a poll and uh, you will decide which way you like most, iSpring or PowerPoint. Nadia, can you please help us launch a poll? And while you're doing that, I will save and close my audio narration tool. Yes, just did it. Let's wait for answers. Jason text in love that tip with using the shift key. I didn't know that. That's cool. I'm happy that it was useful. Actually, it was uh, quite some time when I first <laughs> discovered that. <laughs> and actually, we have many of questions. Sure, we. I can definitely answer some of them while the polls Yeah, we on. still got some responses. Um, Berene is asking uh, which audio file formats, MP3, WAV, etc., are supported to run on PowerPoint. Sure, I can definitely show you where you can find these supported audio files. For PowerPoint, you need to go to Insert, you need to click Audio, Audio on my PC, and here at the bottom you will see the supported audio files. They are MP3. And also you can find some more audio formats here. They are WAV and WMA. As for iSpring, you need to do the, almost the same thing. Just go to Manage Narration. Click where it says Audio. Click From File. And again, look at this part. So in iSpring, you can upload MP3, WAV, and WMA files. And this life hack works for any other place where you upload any files. Uh, once you click Upload, uh, Windows will always show which formats you can upload. Of course, uh, don't switch to all files here. <laughs> they will not, you will not be able to add the other files but audio here. Thank you so much for covering this question. And uh, we can return for a poll uh, which way of auto synchronization you prefer. We have 78% for iSpring and 22% for PowerPoint. Oh, that's cool. I am happy that most of you like uh, the iSpring way, but of course, uh, I cannot disagree that uh, PowerPoint is also powerful. And uh, of course, you can definitely do this task in PowerPoint, especially if you don't have too many audio files or too many slides. Because imagine that if you had like 100 slides and you, ha and you would have to define timings per each slide. <laughs> so I think that would take some time. Of course, in iSpring, you will also have to listen and uh, it will take some time to do a long presentation like this, but still uh, PowerPoint and iSpring are both good. Thank you so much. I think uh, we can yeah. continue now. Yeah, do we, we have, have any other questions? questions? But uh, I want sure. you to ask question that I think I have uh, for. Uh, questions about that. Uh, text to speech is very fast. Is there an easy way to create a pause into the audio without splitting the audio and uh, to slow down the pace of speech? And we have, uh, I think, three uh, questions about that. How to pause uh, text to speech? Oh, I see. 
Okay, actually, I have very good news for you because I'm going to show you the life hack for creating pauses in the speech without separating the audio. So I will show that later when we uh, move on to, so when we come to the text to speech part of our webinar. So don't worry, I will definitely show you what to do in this case. Yeah, and thank you so much for covering this question. And uh, Everyone who is asking for the recording, yes, this session is recorded and we will send you a link to the recording tomorrow on your emails. That's all from my side right now. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Now we will continue and we will move on to task number two now. So I will save and close here and we will move on. Just a second. Okay, so it works now. All right, uh, we've just synced audio to the whole presentation and now it's time to move on to task number two. We will take a closer look at one of the slides in our presentation and this is going to be a slide with animations. My goal is to make them appear according to the audio narration. Before we begin, let me show you what we will get in the end. Nadia, can you please help me to run the, pre the second preview? So now I'm showing, I decided to show the preview in advance because the process will be uh, quite long and it's better to see the end result to understand what we are doing better. So Nadia, please run the preview. Shuttle Description Each space shuttle was a reusable launch system composed of three main assemblies. 1. The reusable orbiter vehicle. 2. The expendable external tank. And 3. The two reusable solid rocket boosters. Shortly after the tank and boosters are jettisoned, the orbiter vehicle enters orbit alone. At the conclusion of the mission, the orbiter fires its orbital maneuvering system to deorbit and re-enter the atmosphere. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. So now when you've seen how uh, it looks in the end, uh, I'm going to show you how I achieved that. And first, we will do that in PowerPoint. So now we will need to go to slide five. This is the slide with animations that you've seen on the preview. Here I have three groups of objects. They are one, two, and three. First, we are going to animate them and then we will synchronize them with the audio. So I will add the audio right now and then we can continue. Again, I will need to go to insert, click where it says audio, audio on my PC, and this time I will select the second audio file. I will move the sound icon to the right to make sure it's not visible on the slide. And now I will need to open animation pane. In the animation pane, we will set up all the um, options for our animations and audio. To open that, I will go to animations tab, click where it says animation pane. And here I will click on the audio. Now I will need to ensure that the audio starts automatically. To do that, I will, look, uh, I will need to change on click to with previous. Now we will need to set up animations for the groups. I'm going to click on group number one and select the animation. I'm going to add fade animation. Same thing I will do for group number two and for group number three. Now in the animation pane, you can see three animations for one, two, three groups. Okay, and now we will need to change the starting options for these animations. Uh, for the first one, I will need to check, I will need to set with previous to make sure that first animation starts together with the audio. For the second one and for the third one, I'm going to select after previous because I want these two animations to go one by one right after the first animation. I will click on this animation now 
and check after previous. All right, we are almost done. The last thing to do is to add timings again. So again, you will have to listen to the audio and write down the timings. And of course, I've did that in advance, so I'm going to show you my timings for this project. So there will be eight seconds for the first animation and four seconds for animation number two and animation number three. Let's add the timings. I will click on the first animation and add the timing in the delay. So for this one, it will be eight seconds. This one, four seconds. And again, four seconds. Okay, so now we've added all the timings and um, the animation synchronization is complete in PowerPoint. We have already seen the preview, so now we can move on to iSpringBot and see how to do that in iSpring. I'm going to switch to switch. Sorry, I'm going to switch to my iSpring copy, and I will click Manage Narration again. Okay, actually, sorry, not yet. I will close it. And the first thing before you go to manage narration, you need to make sure that the animations are set correctly. But it's actually very easy to do. Here on this slide, I already have all the animations added to my groups. And the only thing I will need to do is to go to animations and check that all of the animations are set to start on click. So I just select all of them. Actually, if you want to select all objects in, in any list, in Windows, in PowerPoint, you may click Control plus A on your keyboard. Once you do that, all of the objects will be selected like this. And here, make sure that they are all set on click. I already have the right option chosen. So now I will go to iSpring Suite tab and click Manage Narration. Here in Manage Narration, I will go to slide 5. You will need to make sure that your mouse cursor is set on slide number 5. Then I will click where it says Audio, go to From File, and select my audio file for animations. This time, you will need to make sure that in this little window, you have the slide number 5 selected and Adjust Slide Duration option checked because this time we need to match slide number five and the audio file exactly. So we have did it and now we can click insert. The audio is now added to slide number five and we can start synchronizing our animations. The process will be almost the same as for the slide synchronization. The only thing you will need to do is click next animation instead of next slide. So again, you will need to click on the same sync button. Here you will need to click start sync and the next animation button will appear. Actually, the name of the button here depends on what is next after the cursor, meaning that if after your cursor, the animation yellow mark goes like this, it will say next animation. And if after the cursor there is a slide border, you will see the next slide button. So don't worry if you can't find this animation synchronization. It's not a separate option. It's the same option as for slides. Again, you will not hear any audio, but I will comment what I'm doing and you will see how it works. Okay, I can click Start Sync, and as you can see, I have Next Animation here. When it's time, I click Next Animation, and as you can see, it appears in the right place, like this. So I will click Done here, and actually, I will need to move the border of slide 5 till the end of the slide because I clicked Done too early. Okay, 
So we did the animation synchronization in iSpring. Again, the result will be the same as in the preview that we showed you in the beginning. But this time, uh, you won't have to listen to the audio in advance, and you won't have to deal with many animation settings. Of course, here you, you also need to listen to the audio and be attentive where you click next animation. And also, you, will know, you may probably have to move around these yellow marks. But uh, as for me, it's much easier to do that in iSpring because there is less chance to make a mistake. Because when you work in PowerPoint, all of these little tiny settings, they may be overwhelming. <laughs> so it's easier to do that. It's pretty straightforward here. And actually, we are done with the task number two. We can click Save and Close. And again, I will ask Nadia to launch a poll, and we will see which way of syncing animations you enjoyed more, PowerPoint or iSpring. And again, while the poll is going, uh, I will answer your questions if you have any in the chat. Yes, the poll is up and running. and. Uh... I have uh, I add a third result both because uh, there were a comment in the chat that I liked both why uh, we don't have that <laughs> so and we have many many questions uh, perfect that's good I'm very happy that you are very active it's always nice to do a webinar when the when people in the chat are being active and asking questions. Yes, and uh, we have a question from Katrin. She's curious, are you able to turn the captions on and off or are they always on? So do you mean uh, the captions for the video? Can you please tell which captions you, you mean? Yes, please, Katrin, can you elaborate? on that yeah sure you can just put your answer in chat and we will be happy to answer yes that. and we have also a question from steve can the ice cream timeline scale be changed yes yeah, sure definitely i will show you how to do that once you click manage narration you will see here on the uh, on the right the scale and you may move it like this so actually i had a fun story once i was editing a course video and i left somewhere a teeny tiny piece of audio it was like less than one millimeter and when i tried to add audio on this slide it constantly told me that I was trying to overlap the existing audio and I was like there is no audio <laughs> and then I scaled the so I, I set it like the highest scale and I found this small audio piece that was there <laughs> so be careful when you do that and this is definitely a good feature yeah thank you so much for covering this question and uh, just reading <laughs> ah Catherine said yes she mean the video I able to turn the captions on the video and on and off or are they always on if you add the video from power sorry from YouTube to iSpring you can definitely use the uh, YouTube captions in the video, just like in the actual YouTube web page. And as for iSpring, uh, in iSpring Cam Pro, you may you will have to add captions manually, so they will stay in the video. Also, it's possible to add captions uh, to the video inserted from your computer on the YouTube, oh, sorry, <laughs> on the PowerPoint slide and add uh, captions with the PowerPoint caption feature. But there, uh, there will be the button that will also turn them on and off. Thank you so much. I so hope I that Arena is cover your question. Sure, sorry, I will not be able to demonstrate it now because I don't have any files prepared to demonstrate the captions. But we, we may send you an email after the webinar if you want, explaining more about the captions in iSpring course. Yeah, definitely. 
And uh, last question before section three of our webinar uh, from Frank. How can I sync speech with a recorded video from, for example, Snagit? I add this video in PowerPoint because the video added in iSpring is only visible on the side of the screen, not the main screen. When using Manage Narration, I cannot see that video running to sync audio in Manage Narration. It's a little big question. Actually, I, I no, no problem. I've got it and they can definitely help you. Yes, if you add a video in Manage Narration, it will show you the video only in the player of the course. But if you use the uh, slide, rec the screen recording tool, to add, edit your videos and add them, you will see them on the slide. Actually, here I can show you just a little bit. So I will click on screen recording. So now I will click new project and move it to the monitor that I'm showing, <laughs> of course. Okay, so here I don't have any video with me, so I'm going to add some shape here to pretend that it is our video. Then I'm going to add audio. Again, I will use audio that we already used today, this one. And then uh, you may work here with the audio, so you can cut the audio, you can move it around so you can do some actions with it. And once you're happy with it, you may, you need to click save and return to course and you will see the edited video right on the slide. And it will be shown just like here in the middle of the slide. So just use another feature for this task and that will work. Okay, I hope I answered the question. Nadia, can we move on? Do we have any other um, questions? Yes, we have Mary Frank that I, as I understand, you snag it a lot. And Mary says, uh, is there a recommendation is to not use snag it and use screen recording instead? Actually, uh, I'm not very familiar with Snagit, and if you create a video in Snagit, you will most likely have to save it as a video, as an MP4 file, and then add it to iSpring slide uh, using PowerPoint insert, like this. So, uh, just like I added the audio, you can add the video, and that will be on the PowerPoint slide and published with iSpring and show and shown on the slide, not on the player. And um, so it depends on what is more convenient to you. Actually, iSpring screen recording tool, it's called iSpring Cam Pro, is also powerful and it allows to edit audio and video, cut it, slow it down, and you can also, uh, so you can do some simple editing with it. And um, if you may just check both ways and see which one works for you better. Yeah, thank you so much for this question. Frank is texting, uh, the video is not running. I now do both and then it is possible, but then I should not show recording from iSpring on the side. To sync text, you should add this nugget to load both PowerPoint for main text and in manage narration for synchronization, but do not, do not show that uh, that obne, I don't understand <laughs> last word, sorry. Uh, show that one, sorry, but do not show that one. So uh, in the iSpring Cam Pro, you can just uh, cut the audio like I showed and move it around. And then that will add the silence between the between two parts of the audio. So as for managed narration editing, my colleague Kate wrote in chat what you need to do to add a silence. So it's show there is a feature in the managed narration. So I'm very I'm very sorry that I'm not totally familiar with Snagit, so I may not be able to tell you uh, what exactly you need to do to add Snagit video to iSpring, but I 
can definitely tell you that if you use a video from a different program, then you will uh, you will need to upload to iSpring like the end result, the actual video, which is an MP4 video. And if you have uh, to do some more edits, you may use iSpring Cam Pro to do that. So you can re you can upload your video that you didn't snag it to iSpring. Cam Pro and edit it there if needed. If the video does not play on the slide, uh, you need to go to playback. So I'm going to show it on the audio icon. Just a second. Okay, so the same playback tab will appear for the video and here you will have to ch check if the video starts automatically. So if you have any issues with your course, uh, you can definitely send it to our support email. I will send it in chat right now. So it's support at ispring.com and my colleagues will definitely help you to solve the issue if you have it. Yes, thank you so much, Irina, for covering this long question. I think that uh, Kate is uh, also helped to figure everything out. So I think that we can uh, move on to the step number three of our today webinar. Yes, right. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Just a second. So speaking about course narration, uh, sorry, I think that's the wrong part. <laughs> okay, just a moment. So uh, we've just uh, did the um, synchronization with the ready-made audio, and now uh, we are going to see and learn how to create an audio that is created by a robot. Basically, we are going to learn how to use the text-to-speech feature. Text-to-speech feature is very convenient because you don't have to contact the professional voice artist or somebody who is going to do the uh, voice narration for your course and you can just use an automatic, uh, an automatic transferring of text to speech. And now I'm going to show you how to do that. And basically, we are going to do the same thing. We are going to add audio to slide five and synchronize it with animations. But this time, we will create an audio track with the text-to-speech feature. I'm going to go back to my presentation and open an iSpring copy of that. Here, I will need to go to Manage Narration. And I'm going to delete the audio from slide five because we will replace it with the automatic narration. Now we will need to go to audio and click on text to speech. The text to speech window will open. For the text to speech, of course, you will have to prepare the written text in advance. And now I'm going to answer the question uh, that was asked in chat about the speed of the um, uh, text to speech. Uh, there is no uh, feature to slow down the actual voice, but there is a life hack that will help you. So here, when I prepared for the webinar, I came across the issue that when I put this um, so when I put these points uh, just like this in, as a list, uh, when I created my voiceover, it just uh, went all very quickly. So they've just read it uh, in like one second. <laughs> and uh, to make sure that uh, these, uh, these points are separated, you need to actually put a dot. So when you need the uh, voice, the robot voice artist uh, to stop, to make a pause, just put a dot there. So if you do that like this, uh, then you will see, uh, then you will hear that it um, makes stops in the right places. And after you've worked, worked on your text and checked that you have dots everywhere you need the pause, you may click insert. And actually, before you click insert, you can check one of the voice artists available here. And sometimes for different uh, types of text, um, one or another voice artist may sound better. So for this text, I think that Evelyn is the best. But for 
but sometimes uh, it's uh, better to check some uh, somebody else from there. So I'm going to go with Avalon Natural Voice and click Insert. Again, I will have to check that I made an audio to slide five and that I have a just slide duration. And then I will click Insert here. Here I will need to adjust the length of the slide and I will not do the synchronization of animations again, but if you replace the audio like this, uh, you may have to move the animation marks around. All right, so that is how you do the manage narration, uh, sorry, the text-to-speech feature. Text-to-speech feature is also available in iSpring Camp Pro that I showed you earlier when I answered the question. And now it's time to see how it works and how and listen how it sounds. Okay, Nadia, can you please help to launch the preview with the text-to-speech yeah, sure. audio? Each space shuttle was a reusable launch system composed of three main assemblies, the expendable external tank, the reusable orbiter vehicle, two reusable solid rocket boosters. Shortly after the tank and boosters are jettisoned, the orbiter vehicle enters orbit alone. At the conclusion of the mission, the orbiter fires its orbital maneuvering system to deorbit and re-enter the atmosphere. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that was the preview of our text-to-speech narration and I think now we can move on and I have uh, I have another good news for you and I'm going to tell them right now can you see my presentation actually I think you don't Not right? yet okay sure all right So, speaking about course narration, I have good news for you, as, as I already said. If you ever got feedback from your employees or students that it's a little too boring to listen to narrated courses, we will soon add a great feature. In September, we will release an update where your learners will be able to speed up the course playback. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? So, don't miss this update and sign up to our trial of iSpring Suite if you didn't do that. The link will be shared in the chat shortly. So my colleague Kate uh, will share the link with you. Kate, can you please help us? Yes, we will share a link with Kate. Okay, perfect. So uh, we are done with our narration part and we have two more things to do. But before we move on, Nadia, do you have any questions in chat? Can you please let me know if there are any and I will definitely Yes, we them. have uh, questions about text to speech feature. And uh, okay, we have question from Iskra in what languages is text to speech available? So in text to speech there are many languages, so you can see all of the languages once you open it. So let me show you one second. Okay, so here you can see that it supports so many languages. I don't know how many, <laughs> but this list is impressive. Okay, do we have any other questions? Yes. We have, uh, Jason is asking, can you just edit the clip in the Manage Narration tab and add silence if you want more? Sure, you can definitely do that. So you can click on Edit Clip here and uh, you may add silence like this. So if you click there and you can also insert silence here. So just a second like this, and you can select the duration of the silence if you need more pauses. So I think that uh, this life hack with dots, it helps because uh, then you will have to add too many silence <laughs> in there. And when you put dots, uh, in most cases, that will already sound much better. Yes, thank you so much. 
and Justin is curious to use text-to-speech in a different language. Does the text also need to be in that other language or does it translate the text? So if the text is in English, but I select Spanish as the language, does it translate to Spanish from the English? I'm afraid it does not. You will need to put the text in the language that you need to, uh, so that you will then select it here. But you may use something like Google Translate before you put it in there, but here it's not possible to translate it. Actually, speaking about translation, we have uh, we don't have this exact feature for the text to speech but we do have an option to translate the whole i spring course i mean the texts on the presentation and quizzes and interactions and basically uh, what it does it exports all the texts uh, for the program called xlif that will automatically translate all the texts in your presentation and then you can import it back and your course will be in a different language. So this is not exactly the answer to the question, but this is a good feature uh, that may be helpful for you. Thank you so much for covering this question. Uh, and uh, last question. For now, can you put in multiple dots to have it slow down? Actually, I haven't tried yet. And no, actually, I did try. And in this case, uh, they will say dot. <laughs> so it's not a good idea. You, you need to only add one dot. Otherwise, it will consider it a text and not a mark. <laughs> not like not not a punctuation. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for covering this question. I think that we can move on. All right, perfect. In this case, let's check that you do see my screen. Are you doing yes, it? yes. Perfect. Okay, now if you see my screen, we can continue. And we will move on to task number three. And now we will learn how to add background music to our presentation. First, we will do that in PowerPoint. I'm going to close this presentation and go to my PowerPoint course. So here I will need to, to repeat almost same steps as we did for our generation. So I will click on step one. Then I go to insert and click audio, go to audio on my PC and select one of the audio files that I have here. I will need to move the audio icon to the right to make sure it's not visible. And then we are going to make this audio to play across slides. Here in PowerPoint, there is a feature that is called play in background and it makes relatively easy to set up the audio to play during the whole course. So once you click it, this audio will now play <clears throat> will now play across slides and repeat when it's finished. The issue is that uh, to make this audio to play across slides and if you want to add more audios except this one to your playlist, you will have to combine all of the audios in one long audio track in some third-party software. Otherwise, you will have trouble syncing your audio files and your slides. So now, uh, once we did it, I'm going to show you how to add playlist in iSpring, and we are going to look at the preview after the iSpring part. So in iSpring, I will go to my iSpring copy. I will go to slide properties. And here I'm going to create a playlist. To do that, you will need to click playlist. Then click manage playlists. Then I will click on new and type the name. I will call it Space Shuttle 2 as I already have one playlist. Then I will need to click on the green plus icon. And now in iSpring, I will be able to add as many audio files for my playlist as I want. I have three audio files. They are some royalty-free music. And I'm going to add them to my playlist so that they can play nicely in the background. 
And also here you can adjust the audio volume of your playlist. I will set it to 20% to make sure that music and narrator speech do not overlap too much. And also click on loop playlist here to make sure that if all songs that you added are over, uh, do not just stop and they continue from the very beginning. Okay, once we created the playlist, we need to click close. And then you will need to select all slides to add a playlist. So I will use this uh, shortcut that I already showed you, which is Control plus A. I am clicking here. I click on my playlist button and select the playlist that I've just created. As you can see in the playlist column, I now have uh, the playlist selected. And actually, you can disable the playlist on the slides where you don't want the music. For example, if you have a slide with a quiz where you want your learners to concentrate. But all of these slides are information slides, so I will leave the playlist for all of them. Once it's done, I can click Save and Close, and I will ask Nadia to launch a preview, and we will look how it works. Space Shuttle Program The Space Shuttle Program was the United States government's space program from 1981 to 2011. Early History of the Program In 1969, United States Vice President Agnew chaired the National Aeronautics and Space Council, which discussed post-Apollo options for manned space activities. Based on the advice Actually, of the Space Council, the President the right, Nixon made the decision to pursue the Low Earth Orbital slide, Infrastructure option. And the music does not stop. Shuttle Description Each space shuttle was a reusable launch system composed of three main assemblies. What is the Space Shuttle Program? Okay, so the preview is done. And this was the last part of our PowerPoint versus iSpring tasks. And again, we will launch a poll and see which way you like most. Maria, can you please help? Yes, I just launch a poll. And while we waiting for the answers, we have questions. <laughs> Sure, that's good. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, Mary is uh, curious. Can you control the volume of the background music? Sure, sure definitely. I will show again this feature. So when you go to Slide Properties and go to your playlist, you can set the background audio volume. Actually, when I listened to my preview now, I, I also thought that this music was playing too loud, so to make sure it does not happen, just set it, it to lower volume here, like 5% or something. And you don't have to publish the course all the time to, to, to check if audio narration and music are matching. You can just run the preview of one slide, just click on the slide where you have playlist and audio narration, click under the preview, click preview selected slides, don't click on the whole preview button, it will uh, process the whole course and take uh, ages to do that, <laughs> especially if you have a big course. So just uh, preview selected slides and it will help you to check very quickly if the settings you did are okay. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is from Michelle. Can the learner turn off the background music without losing the text audio? Actually, I'm afraid that they will play both here. So uh, the playlist music and the narrator speech will play along and it's better to set the music to lower, like the to make it more quiet, to make sure that it's not interfere with the user, like with the user's work and understanding of the material. Yeah, thank you so much. And also we have two more questions. Uh, Steve is asking, does text-to-speech in iSprint allow SSML tags? Actually, I don't know what it is, 
but I Google it. Do you know what is SSML tags? Sure. Uh, yes, I know that. And this, the, they are the text for editing the text, actually. <laughs> and I'm afraid that it does not support them there. You can only put the actual text to this. Um, so to this window where you put the text for converting it to speech. Yeah, got it. Thank you for covering this question too. And we have a question from Peter. Uh, these languages, as I understand it, it's English, are uh, in the characters of the original speech. But what if I need to select in the Latin alphabet? I'm afraid I'm not fully familiar with this feature, but I'll be happy to find the correct answer after the webinar, and we will definitely uh, tell you how it works. So I'm afraid I haven't come across this question yet. <laughs> so we will definitely answer. Uh, Peter says select sure. contents and you yes. see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I see that. We will definitely check that. I will talk to our developers and we will send you an email after the webinar. Yes, so I think that was the last question for today. And uh, we can wait a couple of minutes if you have any questions more. And while we are doing that, take a couple of minutes to take part in our survey after the webinar. It will really help us to provide you with more relevant information in future. So I think that we don't have any questions. So thank you very much everyone for coming today, spending that valuable half an hour, half an hour, not half an hour, <laughs> hour and a half, I think. Uh, with us and I hope you have enjoyed our today's session. Thank you, Rina, for your big work. It was very helpful and insightful and everyone is texting. Thank you. Thank you. I know you see that too. Thank you so much. And actually, I'm afraid that uh, we haven't covered just one thing, and that was moving audio from one uh, project to another. But I'm very sorry, we have to uh, end our session, <laughs> not to take too much time from your work day. So uh, we are going to send this part uh, together with the resources of this webinar. Actually, every, all the presentations and audios that I used today, you will get them together with the uh, training, uh, sorry, with the um, recording of the webinar and also with this uh, bonus part that uh, we have for our webinar. So sometimes uh, we do bo cover bonus parts and sometimes when we don't have time for that, we just send them and this time we will send them. And of course, you will be able to look at it and uh, try to do that with the resources that we have for you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a wonderful session. I am very happy that you were active and were asking questions. We will send emails to Catherine and Peter. <laughs> uh, so we will check after the webinar and definitely prepare answers for you. Again, thank you so much. Have a great day and goodbye. Yes, thank you. And uh, I just want to share that uh, I will see you all on the August. Um, I think it's not tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's not tomorrow, sorry. <laughs> How to set up triggers and animation in your course. It will be Thursday. So just in one day. We will have a next webinar on our webinar series about PowerPoint versus iSprint, so don't miss it out. Yeah, thank you everyone again. Bye. Have a great day. Goodbye. Have a great day again.